Music by James Block, <clears throat> for those of you that are interested. Sometimes I don't put that in the description. Um, it is a somber day today, you guys, as many of you are very aware of what's going on in Israel. I just wanted to take a little bit of time and um, and talk about that. Been flooded with messages text messages, emails, things like that. Jonathan, are you doing any codes on this? Jonathan, this, Jonathan, that. Um, and no, I, I actually, I have not done any codes on this, even though I know it's encoded. Um, everything that was, is, and will be is encoded. Um, you guys, make sure my mic, yeah, mic is on. Again, that was um, the hold he is coming by james block and uh let me just first start off by saying my heart goes out to the nation of israel and um which is very diverse by the way this is, we're not just talking about jews here you guys there are many kind of people living in israel i have friends in israel right now we have just wrapped up sukkot and came through the day of simchat torah and this is when the attack has happened. And uh, I can tell you, um, even being here in uh, what is known in Florida as Little Tel Aviv, uh, Surfside, Bell Harbor, Sunny Isle, Aventura, lots of Jews. This is probably one of the most densely populated um, communities on the East Coast besides New York, uh, with a lot of Sephardic Jews. There are some Ashkenazi um, Latino uh, Jews, there's Russian Jews here, Ukrainian, and um, it's a somber place. Yesterday was very cloudy, and it was very fitting, uh, fit fit the mood. You, you, you just, I, I had lunch in an in a Israeli delicatessen, and you could feel um, in the air. Um, it was somber. There was even an Israeli guy on the phone live with his family in Israel. And I was just kind of listening in on his conversation. And uh, I, I sensed desperation in there. Um, so uh, then I wake up. Well, well first of all, I've, I've watched a lot of, as many of you have as well, on all of all the media, TikTok, Instagram, where both sides are posting videos. Hamas and um, the, the Jewish people, the Israelis. Um, we're going to look at some of that on my TikTok. I, I was just going through it, and, and this is very difficult, very, very um, 
shocking and um repulsive and uh ang you know the i can't i can't put in the words the anger uh especially when i wake up this morning and i see supposed hebrews posting on facebook free palestine what the hell is that about do, do, do you even know who you are you should be mortified horrified and disgusted at, at, what, at what these animals have done beheading babies burning grandmothers shooting innocent civilians this is not military targets we're talking about innocent people gunned down just butchered Is this the, the the final antifada? You know there were two there were two previous antifadas, and I watched them. You know the suicide bombers in Jerusalem. This is before all the walls. As you know, Arafat was very much alive in, in calling the shots on that. Thank you. He's gone. But there's other Arafats. You, you know the Ayatollah of Iran is behind this as well as some of the other hostile countries toward Israel funding. And, and by the way, our own president, our own government gives $6 billion to these animals. To This is how they've done it, by the way. Israel and the IDF had a pretty good grip on uh, arms smuggling and, and things like that. But when you got that kind of money, you can move mountains. A coordinated attack. Plan this was planned for a long time, you guys. And I find it really hard to understand. I, I can't understand how Mossad or CIA or nobody knew this was coming. Is this a spark? Is this a spark that's going to trigger World War Three? this and, and Ukraine? Because this is very similar to World War One, and which, by the way, I spoke about in 2017 when I was looking at the signs in the heavens and I, and I told you guys there was a pandemic coming three years before it happened. Is this going to bring World War III? Is this, is this the final antifada? And by the way, the response from Israel, I pray, is swift and severe. I support, I support them. Whatever it takes. To hunt down the animals that did this and to free and I stand behind Netanyahu when he said yesterday in an inter, uh, a public statement to the world and to Hamas one hair harmed even one hair harmed on any of them and we'll bring down everything we have on you they should level Gaza. And I'm sorry for those of you that that, that are support Palestine, the Palestinians. I know there are innocent people in the Palestinian community, but this is what these animals do. They hide behind these innocents and fight their dirty little, bloody little barbaric war. And that, so they are victims too. My venting is not toward the Palestinian people, but the, those that, that infiltrate trade in. And, and it's not palestinians per se there's no there's no genetic group of people called the palestinians you guys you, you know what the, the genetic makeup of, of the palestinians is arabs and and yemenites and lebanese they all came from different regions to occupy israel when israel was becoming a nation yes there were arabs living here there were jews there were muslims there were christians living here all through the 1900s, up until the time of the Balfour, all the way up until World War I, all of these groups were living here. But we know historically, because the Bible is true, Israel is always Israel. You can call it Palestine all you want, but the Bible calls it Israel. And, and by the way, the borders that they have now is not what the Bible says is their borders. It's actually much more land. So those you get bitch and gripe that Israel takes back the land that was guaranteed to them. By the creator of the universe. Sit down and shut up. I get sick of watching Hebrews, especially that one out in Arizona. 
wearing a kippah and coming against the Jews as the synagogue of Satan. You should be ashamed of yourself, calling yourself a Hebrew, wearing a kippah, which is a Jewish tradition, and then come against the Jewish people. That's your brother. We are Hebrews. And you should be ashamed of yourself for, for, for putting out that, sh that shit. Synagogue of Satan. Do you know what a Khazar is? A Khazar is actually a converted Jew. They're not genetically Jewish. That's, that's not up for, for an argument. Historically, they converted to Judaism. But that doesn't make up the whole of Eastern Europe and, and Russia and Ukraine and all the places where there are genetic Jews. Genetically. This is your brother, Ephraim. What are you doing? I stand with Israel. And I don't care who that pisses off. So unfriend me if you got to. Unsubscribe if you got to. I stand with Israel. I don't care if you call it a Zionist nation. Yahuwah did what he did. He uses good and evil to accomplish his will. So, so what if they were Zionists? He took back the nation. And if you listen to the war stories of, of when all this went down, especially the Yom Kippur War, there's no question that the creator, Yah, Yahuwah, was with the, the Israeli soldiers outnumbered hundreds to one and miracles happen in the deserts to combat there just like in the days of Joshua and Caleb we should be outraged at, at what did, they've done and when they've done this on the day of Simchat Torah it's supposed to be a joyous day and they're killing babies. Did you hear what I said? Beheading babies. Killing old people. Young people. It didn't matter. And not only Jewish people. There was Americans killed. There was Chinese people killed. It did a music festival that was going on. There were people from all over the world there. They were all just Jewish people or Israeli. And many of them wasn't, wasn't even religious. They were just genetically Israeli, Jewish. The whole world should be in outrage right now. No, I haven't worked on any codes on this, you guys. Um, if, if many of you understand, I'm, I'm going through an adjudication process or about to begin that. So I've been busy gathering data, working with a private investigator, helping me gather information, lawyers. So I've been, you know, doing other things to get ready for this. But I've just been spending time with, with my Israeli and Jewish family here during Sukkot. And uh, it was a beautiful time. And, uh, and my heart's broken to see this. I, I, you know, my, my friend Jacob, the rabbi, he's got family. Lots of family in these areas right now. And he put out a, he, he put out a, a statement. <clears throat> I posted it on my Facebook. Because for those of you that saw it, I can read uh, read it for you guys. It's it's a it's worthy worthy to be read. I don't know if I'll maybe I can screenshot it. These are not normal times. The revulsion, grief, and sorrow can hardly be expressed in the wake of what should have been a joyous Simchat Torah celebration of Torah. The word horrific fails to capture the enormity of beastly savagery, brutality, and vicious evil perpetrated by the spiritual ancestors of Amalek. 
who only seek and seek to steal, kill, and destroy. And this, by the way, this spirit of Amalek is not just in Palestinians or Arabs or Muslims. It's anybody who comes against the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This attack was hor horribly successful only because it was unprovoked. What can one say or add about the 2,000 plus missiles shot, the slaughter of over 260 people at a music festival and hundreds of Israelis killed or the 2,000 plus wounded? What can be added about uh, the rapes, the murder, the unarmed young men, women and children and babies and families, the elderly, the mass kidnapping and the mind and the heart staggers in sorrow and aching pain at the lives and families torn apart by centuries-old senseless hatred. Sadly, the murder is continuing, and the Holocaust spirit did not end in 1945. We worry for a place we love dearly and are too shunned to grieve or to speak. Yes, I have family in Israel, as many as of, of you do. As you have told me, my parents who retired in Israel live in Jerusalem. My uncles, my aunts, nephews, and nieces live in north in, in the north. And I have dear friends in the south in Ashkelon, as many of you do too. As the tiny people, that is not even the resounding, uh, as a tiny people, that is not even the rounding era of the Chinese census, the loss of life in Israel will affect our Jewish family for many, many years. Yes, we absolutely and completely stand in solidarity, in solidarity with Israel and with our people. Uh, um, Israel, we are at war, said the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Hamas militant group is an, an anti-Semitic mass murdering organization whose violent attacks on innocent Israeli civilians is horrifying. Israelis were gunned down in the streets and in their homes. Israel has every right to defend itself against these beastly murder, uh, this beastly murder. Therefore, what well, say you, Rabbi? How could this happen? Where is God in, uh, is the uh, unasked question. I'm not a political expert, expert or political, I'm not a political expert or political uh, ec uh, economist. Uh, neither am I knowledgeable, knowledgeable in military or strategic studies, nor am I a religious expert because I don't believe God likes either religion or division. What I can say is I'm prepared to share is what God says in the Torah. And I was asked by a friend, please text me uh, the proofs to defend Israel and our, uh, and, and our people attacking Israel and the Jewish people denying their mission right to exist the imp and implying God is not with us. And I don't know what to say because I now see how wrong that is. And these attacks come from professed Christians and Hebrews, by the way. And he, the person he's talking about is me having this conversation. And other religious people who claim to be, who believe in the Bible. So what does God have to say about Israel and his people? Let me share some verses with you to take to heart because every word of God is seven times refined and pure. The, uh, the first verse is my bedrock and all an all time favorite proof text. I openly share with anti-Semites and all those in between, which is found in Genesis 12, one through three. God clearly establishes an eternity with his standard to those who relate to his children. And now uh, y'all said to Abraham, go from your country and your uh, kindred and from your father's house to the land that I will show you and I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make you a great name so that you will be a blessing and will bless those who bless you and him who curses you I will curse and all of the families of the earth shall be blessed and by the way those who curse them pay attention that there is a eclipse that is going to be taking place that's going to be going right over arizona october 14th that should be a warning it's a sign just like this attack was a sign did you know there was a, a comet called nishimura that went through the sign of leo just in september 
And I said to my friends locally, this is a sign of war. And look what happened. Don't curse Israel. Don't curse the Jewish people. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed. The next verse establishes lawful, his lawful ownership to the children of Israel. And let me just stop right here because I, I know some of you, it's like, why do you even have a dog in the, in the game and the fight? Many don't understand that Israel is still in diaspora. Those that are in Israel, the state, are just a couple of tribes. The rest of us, because I consider myself Israel as well, are in the spora. We're not in the land. So we're not just talking about those that are in the land. Israel is all over, even in Hawaii. I believe Hawaii people, Hawaiian people and all the Polynesians have a connection to Israel. If you understood exponential growth and understood what 7.2 million Israelis going into diaspora in 722 BC and what that exponential growth means. I used to do a demonstration with a pitcher of ice and water and 10 drops of blue dye. Stir it one time. And that's the best visual I can get for the exponential growth of Israel. All, all four corners of the earth are touched by the tribes. Psalm 135, 4, for Yahuwah, Yahuwah has chosen Jacob for himself, Israel as his own possession. The next text answers the lie of super successionism or the replacement theology nonsense is clear in Genesis 17, 7. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generation for an everlasting covenant. And for, for those of you that don't understand everlasting covenant, it means forever. To be an Elohim to you and your offspring after you. Zechariah 2 8, for thus saith Yahuwah uh, Zavaot, after his glory sent me into the nations to plunder you, for he who touches the apple of his eye. This is God's understanding of what is happening in the UN and on the world stage. Watch how the nations quickly change their minds and start increasingly criticizing Israel. And I see that even happening with Christians. And with so-called Hebrews. The synagogue of Satan is not the Jewish people. Genetically Jewish. And they're not all Khazars. You're ignorant of what you're talking about. Khazars are a little sect. And they they were grafted into. They, they know they're not genetically Jewish. They became religious Jews. But there are genetically Jewish people in the world. If you don't believe that, you're stupid. And they still practice Torah. And they do have curly cues and wear funny hats. A song of Asaf, O Elohim, do not keep silent. Do not hold your peace or be still, O Elohim, for behold, your enemies make an uproar. Those who hate you and rise have raised their heads they lay crafty plans against your people and they consult together against your treasured ones they say come and let us wipe them out as a nation and let the name of israel be remembered no more for they conspire with one accord against you they make a covenant you who understands that they are conspiring against who they are conspiring against and finally it was prophecy of what to expect in the future zechariah 12 3 and on that day, I will make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all people. All who lift it will surely hurt themselves, and all the nations of the earth will gather against it. Therefore, yes, let's support and stand with Israel's defense forces. That was posted by my brother, uh, Jacob, very dear friend of mine. He's my legal counsel in many ways. He's my um, spiritual counsel. A very wise brother. If you join me in, in the Shabbat meetings, you know who I'm talking about. And so um, we pray for the 
his family and all the families and for the idea that their mission would be true and swift and protected and that justice would be brought back to the land this is this is going to be very big you guys i, I see this as, uh, as a as a final end to feed uh and to follow the, the, the muslim word for holy war by the way the word hamas in hebrew means violence injustice it's very fitting so there was a comment back in September. I didn't talk about it. I was too busy doing other things, you guys, but many of you know what, what I'm talking about. Um, and I talked about the significance of what that sign meant. It went through the, um, the sign of uh, Leo and then through Virgo. And um, that just happened in, in September. Here we go. If it'll let me click on it, but this, this, uh, here it is. So it was coming through Gen Gemini, August 22nd, August 28th, uh, in Cancer, going into Leo, September 5th, right around the, the time of the death of my father, and then com completing its journey through uh, the early morning sky in the east going into Virgo by September 20th. And uh, I remember having a conversation with friends about this, excuse me, and what I thought it meant. And uh, I distinctly said, well, comets mean war. And Leo is the sign of Judah. Um, so there you go. We didn't even need a code to know this was coming. We could see it in the stars there. So, um, be in prayer, you guys, for for uh, this situation. Uh, and I really hope this is, doesn't spark what I think is going to come. Um, this this looks really bad, you guys. Um, I was thinking about posting or or looking at some some of the videos I've, I've been watching, but I don't know how how that's going to be received on. Uh, the internet but let's just let's take a look at some of these that are just coming <laughs> This is the moment Israeli festival goers were descended upon. This is the party. The actual um, music festival that was going on. And then you have paragliders coming in, landing, because the, board, the Gaza was only three miles away. And this happens. On ...by Hamas militants paragliding in from the skies to inflict terror. They appeared to be oblivious to the impending terror floating hundreds of feet above their head until an eagle-eyed camera person suddenly zoomed in on gray dots in the air, which turned out to be Palestinian militants. Festival goers are then warned of an incoming rocket attack just as the invasion begins. Moments later, the dancing stops and terror ensues as festival goers are forced to run for their lives as armed Hamas fighters began shooting and kidnapping whoever lay in their path. Come. Now I mean, we're hearing it, it again. So Jose, stay with us. In some of the airstrikes on um, Gaza, I, I, I'm, you know, and I got to say, you guys, I'm, I, I know there are innocent people that are probably dying in that. But what can you say? They they brought it on. This is where the Palestinian people have to rise up and come against these groups. Because this is what happens when they're used as a shield. And, and word is from the generals that they are calling up 100,000 reservists. They're going to send 100,000 troops into Gaza to clean house. And I support every bit of it.
The UN says nearly 200,000 people in Gaza have been displaced, fleeing from their homes because of Israel's retaliatory airstrikes. The UN's chief of human rights says Israeli airstrikes have hit several residential towers in Gaza. What do you expect? Civilian casualties expect, are a certainty. Um, Both sides are mourning their talk? losses as the number of no, dead continues no. to rise. Yes, in a televised speech, a, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu me. said Israel's response to Hamas's assault will reverberate for generations. This morning, Israel's military said it will attack. Not only was the border breached, but they crossed over a moral boundary that should have not been crossed. Hamas, quote, everywhere. Israel will mobilize 360,000 reserve troops. Hamas says if they attack, Israeli hostages will pay a high price. The UN says nearly two. This is a volatile Lebanon situation, is now fine. Here's some update. Look, I do not care what your prior opinions are about what is happening in Israel right now, but there is, so this is no all over way that you can is, justify Instagram this. Everywhere. There is no way you can tell me with a straight face that you think this is a proportional use of force. Almost half the population in Gaza are children. There is no way you can argue that... Yeah, I can argue. It's, it's a provoked response. Kylie Jenner just lost 1 million followers. The Lord is telling me to tell you in this. They occupied this village for 12 hours, going around killing everybody they could. So, so yeah, I can say what Israel's response is, is justified. And I, I hope they level all of Gaza, by the way. To be honest. You, you cannot as a as a as a supporter of Palestine, you, you by default are supporting Hamas. There's there is no justification for what, what they just did. None. And this is fifty years after Yom Kippur War. Almost to the day. Where, where virtually the same thing was ha happened. A high holy day or a holy day was violated because everybody's relaxed and everybody is celebrating. Can you imagine? You know, some of you Christians, you're celebrating Christmas, right? Or what? Easter, right? And somebody walks into your house and just slaughters everyone. Would you be offended? Would you have a little bit of malice and hatred in your heart about that that's the response that israel's feeling right now the violation this was going this is going to probably spark something real big in the region you guys and i've been talking about it for years that just some something was going to happen i thought it was going to be uh ukraine and russia that would be a spark very similar to the to world war one and what happened there with um, something regional that turned into a world war. But this, depending on how Israel and the United States responds, because basically Israel is, a, the, is the little United States. It's very upsetting to me. You guys, I, I, I'm just at a loss of words. So my heart goes out to everyone um, who is suffering. My prayers are with you. Um, and just take 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 some peace and understanding that the Messiah is coming to judge all the injustice. And I see that in all, all across the spectrum where these injustices are happening. There's a reckoning coming. You can bank on that. I can even see that what's happening in my, in my life. Where I saw someone post today. Well, Jonathan, you haven't you haven't put out. You, you've pretty much been at a standstill since she did this to you. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. The, the total n number of hours I've been in the codes and most of them were names codes. It's just a few hundred this year. When normally it's many thousand hours. 
or several thousand hours. So yeah, you're absolutely right. I've been bogged down and busy in, in the injustice of what, what's happening. But there's a reckoning coming. You will promise that in his word, that which was stolen by the enemy and the canker worm has eaten, I will restore you. And there ain't a righteous man in his right mind is going to have anything to do with you after witnessing what you did to your last two. Don't fool yourself. Your day is coming and you can bank on it. You guys, that's all I got for you today. Shalom to you. I love you. Yahuwah loves you. Pray for the people of Israel. May Yahuwah bless you. Shalom.